This video explains why common marmosets are used in research into the causes and treatment of Parkinson's disease. You will see how marmosets which have been treated with a drug called MPTP exhibit Parkinsonian symptoms and learn how potential medicines for Parkinson's disease are tested in this animal model. Animal welfare should always be a priority in any research facility. You will see ways in which the welfare of marmosets and in particular MPTP treated marmosets have been improved. You will also be introduced to the strict regulatory framework that controls the use of non-human primates including marmosets in medical research and learn how investigations have been refined in order to reduce both suffering and the number of animals used whilst still ensuring that robust data translatable to humans are obtained. Parkinson's disease is a neurodegenerative disorder where certain parts of the brain progressively die over time. Neurons containing the neurotransmitter dopamine in the part of the brain called the substantia nigra degenerate resulting in motor symptoms including tremor and involuntary shaking, bradykinesia, slowed movement, rigidity and problems with balance. Patients can also experience a number of non-motor symptoms including cognitive problems, psychiatric symptoms such as anxiety and depression and disorders of the gut and bladder likely to be due to loss of neurons in other brain areas. The most effective treatment for the motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease is the drug L-DOPA. Unfortunately, L-DOPA and other newer therapies have side effects which can be severe and they do not slow the progression of the disease. The incidence of Parkinson's disease is rising because age is the biggest risk factor and the number of older people in our population is increasing due to longer life expectancies. It is therefore crucial to better understand what causes Parkinson's disease and to develop effective treatments to address both the symptoms and the progression of this increasingly common condition. Advances in technology and in our understanding of biology means that many areas of medical research can now be carried out without using animals at all or could be done using human or animal derived tissues. However, for many diseases, research using live animals is still needed. Phylogenetically, non-human primates are the closest animals to humans. Because of this, their biology, including the molecular targets where drugs work and their immune responses, are very similar. Consequently, research findings from studies using non-human primates are in general translatable, meaning they are often predictive of what is likely to happen in humans. Additionally, there are some types of behaviour that can only be studied in non-human primates. Common marmosets, which are a type of small New World monkey, are currently the gold standard model for some investigations into the causes and treatment of Parkinson's disease. This is because they show behavioural features that best approximate idiopathic Parkinson's disease. Marmosets can be used to assess motor function and therefore test drugs designed to improve motor symptoms and to predict if a new drug produces side effects such as dyskinesia. They can also be used to study some non-motor symptoms such as cognitive changes. However, there are limitations to the MPTP marmoset model in that the neurodegeneration following treatment is not progressive and so it does not completely reflect the disease as seen in man. Non-human primates are generally only used for research at a late stage of drug development. For example, to assess whether drugs that show promise in other studies are effective and safe before they are administered to humans in clinical trials. Other rodent models are particularly valuable for predicting drug effectiveness in the early stages of drug development. Within the regulatory framework regarding the use of animals in medical research, non-human primates have special status under the law. This is because their closeness to humans means that they may have capacity to suffer in similar ways. Special justification for their use is required, and it must be extremely strong, weighing the harm caused to the animals against the potential benefits to society. In particular, a case must be made that no other non-primate species is suitable for answering the specific research question being addressed. Any application proposing to use animals, including marmosets, in regulated procedures must demonstrate how the three R's principles of replacement, reduction and refinement of animal use will be implemented in the proposed work. 
permission will be granted and licences issued only when appropriate welfare provision has been agreed and approval by several independent bodies including ethics committees has been gained. Welfare provision should take into account the procedures and protocols to be carried out, in addition to the day-to-day -day care, handling and health checking of the animals. Home enclosures should mimic the marmosets' natural environment as far as possible and should be designed to ensure that the marmosets have opportunity to express as full a range of natural behaviours. This can be achieved by including a range of environmental enrichment activities, including ladders and hammocks, and providing different food types and foraging opportunities. Anyone involved in animal research undergoes extensive training. Regular monitoring is carried out by named personnel who have specific responsibilities and by independent inspectors. Their role is to ensure that the research team is working within the law and that the researchers remain competent. This includes recognising symptoms of stress such as piloerection, vocalisation and struggling. In the early 1980s, a group of drug addicts inadvertently injected themselves with a neurotoxin MPTP and developed symptoms and pathology very similar to Parkinson's disease. Non-human primates treated with MPTP also exhibit some of these symptoms. The MPTP Marmoset model was therefore developed to study Parkinson's disease and to test new drugs that could help treat the disease in humans. To induce Parkinsonian symptoms in marmosets, a detailed protocol is established in collaboration with the veterinary surgeon. This will only be approved and licences issued when appropriate welfare considerations have been addressed. MPTP is injected subcutaneously once daily for up to five days at a dose that is titrated to balance efficacy and animal welfare. Being lipophilic, MPTP crosses the blood-brain barrier where it is converted to MPP plus in glial cells. MPP plus then passes into dopamine neurons using the dopamine transporter. Here it inhibits the action of mitochondria and so the neurons die. In the acute phase, the toxin results in severe impairment of the well-being and condition of the animals and therefore such protocols are classified as causing severe suffering. A stringent post-MPTP treatment routine therefore follows. Recovery housing units are provided that can be warmed with a heat pad if the animal's core body temperature drops and which protect animals that display transient hyperactivity that may occur. The acute effects of MPTP treatment can last several months and the reduced mobility and loss of appetite means that animals can lose up to 10% of their body weight. Animals therefore require daily examination, weighing and hand feeding and carers will help groom the animals. A veterinary surgeon will be called out if there is any cause for concern. Human safety is also a priority. MPTP treated marmosets are kept in a designated holding room with restricted access to reduce the risk of accidental exposure to MPTP. Rubber gloves and protective suits are worn during and for two weeks after treatment to prevent human contamination from MPTP or its excreted metabolites. After this acute period, the MPTP-treated marmosets have reduced mobility and exhibit symptoms similar to some of those observed clinically in Parkinson's disease. These include bradykinesia and rigidity as compared with untreated animals, and they may also exhibit tremor. Environmental enrichment activities are modified to account for this. For example, solid, more stable hammocks are provided, making it easier for the marmosets to climb in and out and special trays are provided to help with food foraging. Only when the marmosets are able to fully look after themselves, including eating, drinking and grooming, are they ready for studies investigating new and improved treatments for Parkinson's disease. Parkinsonian-like motor symptoms including bradykinesia, rigidity and postural instability can be measured in MPTP-treated marmosets using a specially designed experimental setup. Animals are placed in individual cages fitted with photoelectric cells which emit light beams in different areas. When an animal is active, it breaks the beams, so the number of beam breaks indicates the degree of locomotor activity. Nesting areas or partners are not provided as these would interfere with the detection of movement. However, animals can see each other via mirrors fixed in the room. 
The observation room has a one-way mirror so that the marmosets are undisturbed but behaviour, including dyskinesia, can be monitored and recorded. To reduce the welfare impact, animals stay in the cages for the minimum time required, which is generally less than eight hours. This may be repeated over several weeks, with a break of at least two days between treatments. Drugs can be administered to see if they improve motor activity in the MPTP-treated marmosets. MPTP-treated marmosets also exhibit cognitive impairment. Memory and learning can be tested using the Wisconsin Generalized Testing Apparatus. Animals are trained to enter the test apparatus behind a screen. In front of the screen are two objects placed on top of two wells, one well containing a treat. The animals have to learn which object is associated with the treat. The treat can be moved or the object changed and the animals have to relearn the association. As the test becomes more difficult, the animals fail more often. The MPTP treated marmosets have more difficulty learning and remembering the task than the naive untreated animals. Using these types of apparatus, the effects of experimental drugs which have potential use in Parkinson's disease can be assessed to see if motor symptoms are reduced, if cognitive ability is improved, or if a new drug has a better side effect profile than existing therapies. The MPTP treated marmosets can be kept indefinitely as long as they are deemed fit and healthy. This means that an individual marmoset can be reused to study the effects of many different drugs that have been developed to treat symptoms of Parkinson's disease, so fewer new marmosets need to be treated with MPTP. Importantly though, they have to be assessed by the veterinary surgeon between studies. The veterinary surgeon must confirm that the animal's general state of health and well-being has been fully restored and the animals are fit to be reused for further study. This decision is informed by routine blood analysis, weight monitoring and regular physical examination. Experimental design that takes into account statistical analysis, randomization to reduce experimental bias and effective data gathering along with multi-parameter testing and power calculations is key to obtaining both robust data and in reducing the number of animals used. Parkinson's disease is a serious brain condition for which existing therapies do not adequately control symptoms or modify disease progression and for which the incidence in our population is increasing. Data obtained from the MPTP marmoset model translate well to humans and with animal welfare considerations a priority for the time being it remains a valuable animal model for future drug development.